fellow cyborgs and welcome to another 0x19 update in which I tell you about the books I've recently read, the current state of my physical TBR, the books I've hauled, and the books that I am currently reading or planning to read very soon. Let's get started with the books that I have already read. This was a very disappointing couple of weeks, guys, so just get ready. Let's start with the DNF because DNFs are always fun to talk about. This is Time Cat by Lloyd Alexander aka the book with very little world building where a boy and his cat travel back in time and teach poopy adults about cat behavior and then change their lives for the better and then just peace out and randomly move on to the next time period without knowing why, how, or even why again. Just, this is a big why for me. The premise had a lot of potential for me as a cat lover and someone who likes reading things set back in historical past, but the same sort of thing I had trouble with the other Lloyd Alexander I read this year, which was The Cat Who Wished to Be a Man, was that I just don't believe that Lloyd Alexander has a world outside of these pages. He just drops you smack dab in the middle of the story because background and setting the scene just isn't exciting for kids, and then just goes with it in this little pocket universe that, or rather just like pocket village. I like, like I said, I do not believe that any of his characters have backstories. I do not believe that he has fully fleshed out these historical periods and has done his research and is not just stereotypically representing the places he's gone to. So 50 pages in, I just didn't care. And I was not going to read the rest of the book. So DNF two stars from me. You remember the books that I talked to you guys about wanting to read? Well, I read those two books um, since I talked with you last, but they both were arduous two-star experiences. So let me tell you about them. This is Jose Saramago's All the Names, which was translated by Margaret Hulk Hosta. I number one, hated this writing style or translation style so much. Jose Saramago doesn't seem to believe in quotation marks and uses tabs, like, you know, separating paragraphs as seldom as possible, which just makes for the page being a dense and cluttered reading experience, not to mention sometimes confusing when reading back and forth conversations between people and having no hint at who's talking apart from commas and capitalization. Within these lengthy paragraphs are also lots of contemplative digressions of our main character, Senor Jose, which did nothing to further the plot. And I think that the problem with this is that it seemed like this was going to be a book with a plot and a mystery, but it turned into a character study about a character I didn't connect with. At best, I kind of pictured him as like the Baker Kowalski in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And at worst, he was just this pathetic and almost like stalker sort of loner person, which frustrates me as an introvert and someone, you know, who isn't constantly around people, that if you don't have a vibrant social life, then you're going to resort to breaking into schools and sleeping on rando couches and in graveyards and stuff. And the mystery that was in here was, it, it felt kind of like it came to no purpose unfortunately. I was recommended this by Hillary from Your Robot Friend because I love reading about death in books, and I think that that was a really apt recommendation for this. This definitely ruminates on death and death rituals. There's a extended scene in a graveyard, but it wasn't enough for me to connect with the story and care about it. I wonder how much of my annoyance would have been removed were the writing style different, but it's just really hard to say. So two stars from all the names. I'm bummed, but I tried. And then there was Down Below Station by CJ Cherry. So the only reason why 
I continued reading this book, and it I talked about this in my last video, is that this is the first book in the Alliance Union universe that CJ Cherry has written a bunch of books in. So it kept me back from DNFing this because I did really not enjoy this reading experience, was to get that background of that universe so that in future books that I'm actually more invested in, I at least have this background knowledge of who are the Union, who are the Alliance, and all of the other world terminology and stuff like that. I I did finish this pretty much just because of that desire, but this is an incredibly dense, incredibly complex book about intergalactic war. This says interstellar conflict on the front. Fine. I accept interstellar war and conflict. The book starts with this kind of rogue military ship demanding admittance onto the space station with thousands and thousands of refugees in its hull from a neighboring space station that has just imploded. Not literally, but politically and literally. So the first part of this book is about the space station coping with this influx of refugees and overhauling its infrastructure to accommodate these paperless, ailing, potentially dangerous thousands of people that they didn't agree to house, but because you can't really argue with guns, they accepted them. This follows a bunch of point of view characters that I did not care about at all. Kill them, don't care, whatever. There's even a point where one of the point of view characters gets killed in a scene from another character's point of view and it's just like not even ruminated on. So it felt like the story didn't even care about some of these characters. The only character that at all interested me was Josh Talley because he comes from the Union, which is a group of humanoid aliens, I believe, that do cloning to beef up their ranks in the army. And so there's a book called Citine all about those, the union. And that sounded really interesting to me. I thought he was the most interesting, but still it was just, he was interesting in comparison to everybody else that I was able, you know, that I had the opportunity to care about. So this was a slog to read about people I didn't care about, about a complicated scenario that I don't particularly like reading about. I recognize why this won a Hugo, but I'm coming to the terms with maybe, maybe I don't love books that the Hugo loves. Or maybe it's just, it depends on the year. I don't know. So that's down below station for you. Two stars. Don't really recommend. I'll let you know if I needed to have read this to understand other books that hopefully I'll enjoy more. So there you go. From the title of this video, you know that Victober is coming up and I'm super excited. I'm so excited that I decided to read a little Victorian something before Victober just because I could not contain my excitement. That little something was A Dark Knight's Work by Elizabeth Gaskell. This comes highly recommended from Katie of Books and Things. I unfortunately only gave this three stars. I feel like I just get on better with Gaskell's long novels and not her short novels or short stories because I did not have a very good experience with a short story collection by hers with Cramford in it that I read. And this one was a three star read too. So I think that part of the reason why this didn't quite get with me, even though it covers some really dark and kind of scandalous and interesting topics that I don't see a lot of in Victorian literature necessarily, is that like the pacing just really dragged in the middle and the plot was drawn out over a longer period of time than I was expecting it to be. And because of that extra time period, I felt like the tension and suspense just deflated for a lot of the book and then suddenly perked back up at the end. So, which just wasn't my jam. It meant that the middle section took me a long time to read and I was just like, just derping along with it, you know, wasn't super invested. So I don't not recommend this, but I did not love it the way I have loved Gaskell in the past. Since speaking with you, I have not hauled any books. So my current physical TBR is at 48. Yes, yes. We're into the 40s and I hope that we will be down to the very low 40s at the very least by the end of October. So let me talk to you about what I'm currently reading because there's a couple 
things that I want to talk to you about, and then I'll get into the TBR. I'm still working my way through Poems Bewitched and Haunted. There are quite a number that I am putting little stars next to that I'm really enjoying, so this was definitely worth my impatience to add to my collection, and I look forward to finishing this throughout the month of October. I'm also still buddy reading Northanger Abbey with a friend by, this by Jane Austen, as, as you know. I was recently re-watching one of my videos on Mansfield Park, and I said that this was, like, tied with Mansfield Park for my least enjoyed Jane Austen, but that I didn't remember anything about this. I was correct in that I didn't remember anything about this, but this is so delightful. My goodness, I'm enjoying this on levels akin to Emma, which is my favorite Jane Austen. So this has just been an absolute joy to read. Henry Tilney is the the best thing, and John Thorpe is the worst thing, and I am just loving Northanger Abbey pretty much. This experience has been so incredibly enjoyable. So do not discount the Northanger Abbey. I think you should definitely give it a read. So now onto the TBR. Let me talk to you about two books that are non-Victorian that I'm planning on reading within the next four weeks or so, and then I'll get to the Victorian stuff. Hillary from Your Robot Friend is buddy reading My Cousin Rachel with me. We're starting it on October 1st, and hopefully we are going to enjoy this as much as other Demoriers that we've read. The last Demorier I read was The Scapegoat. It underwhelmed me in it, like immensely, so I'm hoping my cousin Rachel will not disappoint. Toward the end of October or maybe early November, Acacia Ives and I are going to buddy read The Bird's Nest by Shirley Jackson. This will be the third Jackson that I've read this year and hopefully will be as fun of an experience as the other two. Now on to the Victorian books. So Victober is hosted by Kate, Katie, Ange, and Lucy. I will link all of their announcement videos down below. This month of Victober encourages people to read more Victorian literature. There are challenges. I will talk about the challenges challenges that these books fit to when I introduce the books. And let's just get to the books then. This unfortunately ratty copy of The Woman in White, I am going to be buddy reading with Emma Anders. I don't think this fulfills any of the challenges except just to read Victorian literature and also buddy reads are like the best thing. I have not read anything by Wilkie Collins. I do have like four of his things on my Kindle, but I decided that reading a physical copy would just kind of be easier for keeping track of page counts, so my library stepped in even though it is an unfortunate looking book. I know I started reading The Woman in White years ago and then gave up because it just was a slow read and I was not like super enthralled. And I know I've seen like a 1940s movie adaptation, but I don't remember all that much. So I'm hoping that this will be sensational and fun and that Emma and I will have a lot of fun things to talk about. I have here the Bronte Selected Poems edited by Juliet R. V. Barker, which is not on Goodreads and I don't want to create a page for it at this point, so bummerino. This is a collection of the Bronte siblings' poetry, including Branwell, Emily, Anne, and Charlotte, none from the little ones who died when they were young. These poems, to my recollection, were all published within the first 10 years of the Victorian period. The sister, Charlotte, Anne, and Emily all wrote pseudonymously, so that fulfills another challenge. And also Charlotte Bronte is one of the hosts, I think it's Lucy's favorite author. So there you go, three in one. I did it. I started reading this a couple years ago and Charlotte's poems were not that great. I am looking forward to trying Emily's for sure and looking forward to getting this much neglected book off of my TBR so thematically appropriate for October. This is Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling and a tiny cheat, but I don't care. This was already on my TBR. All but one of these stories were written in the last two years of the Victorian era. The last story was written in 1902, so technically this book was published in 1902 and does not qualify as Victorian literature, but I'm counting it. So that fulfills the last 10 years of the Victorian era challenge, and I don't think anything else. I'm going to be reading a short story story a day for I think it's like 12 days. I think there are 12 in here. So wish me luck. Hopefully I will enjoy them. I will be rereading North and South with Acacia Ives. Super duper excited. I don't necessarily plan on doing the general challenge of reading a book and watching its adaptation, partly because I recently watched the adaptation of North and South, the one with Richard Armitage, and I didn't like it. I didn't. So, you know, 
Sorry if I've crushed your opinions of me and my tastes, but it did really make me want to read the source material again. So even though this will not count in decreasing my physical TBR, nor will the woman in white really. So, you know, what you gonna do? I'm still going to thoroughly enjoy rereading North and South, which is one of my favorite books of last year. Oh, and this also counts for one of the challenge because Elizabeth Gaskell is Kate Howe's favorite author. And I think she wrote pseudonymously, but I don't know what name. I did not do my research and no one on booktube seems to, to say it in their videos. So I'm lazy. We can look it up together once I'm done watching, making this video and you're done watching it. And then I have the first two books in the Chronicles of Barsetshire. This is The Warden by Anthony Trollope. And then the follow-up, Barchester Towers, which is a proper noun in the title. So check that little challenge. That's what they're called. Check that challenge off the list. I am super duper looking forward to getting to both of these, but I think they are going to kind of be low priority as far as the Victober TBR, just because I have buddy reads that come first. And the last two weekends of October are going to be a little less cozy book reading than I would like. So hopefully I'll still find the time to read both of these hopeful gems but I'm super excited to start this series. So I think the only challenge that I didn't tick off, let me just double check. So yes, so the only challenge that I haven't touched on yet was the group buddy read of Wives and Daughters. I will not be participating because I read Wives and Daughters last year as well, and I only want to do one reread of a Gaskell this year. So North and South is eat. So those are the books that I have currently read and the books that I am super duper excited about for Victober. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have a Victober TBR video because they're the only things that I'm watching right now and would love to watch some more. Also, let me know if you have opinions on any of the books that I have listed or recommendations because, you know, the TBR is getting down. So maybe in 2019, I can beef it back up a little bit with recommendations and books that I've been missing out on. So anywho, I hope that you are enjoying autumn if you live in the Northern Hemisphere and enjoying spring if you're not. And until next time, continue to be lovely.